And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. I speak with you in the name of God, the Father and Mother of us all. Amen. The other night, my wife Jody and my daughter Evelyn braided their hair in the same way. They did a plait on both sides, like two braided pigtails. Now, with their deep red hair, they call it their pippy longstocking look. When they do this, it becomes overt and obvious they are mother and daughter, that they are family, that they are with each other. In the church, we talk about the sacraments as outward visible signs of inward spiritual grace. Things that we can see and touch, hear and feel. Things that let us know that God is up to something. Things that tell us God is at work. When you see Jody and Evelyn together with their hair braided in the same fashion, it is an outward visible sign that they are not just next to each other. Rather, they are part of each other. They are with each other in the deepest and truest sense. Jesus says to the apostles on top of the mountain at the end of the Gospel of Matthew that he is with them. As we sit here with the death count from the coronavirus pandemic continuing to climb and with our streets teeming with righteous anger and outrage at yet another senseless murder of a black man in handcuffs, it is comforting to be reminded that Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us no matter what. Whether we succeed in eradicating the coronavirus or fail once again to fully address our country's original sin of racism, Jesus is with us. Yet, that word, with, hit me this week, and I believe it offers both comfort and and challenge. It points to the marvelous grace the psalmist expresses when she says, What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. God chooses to be with us. Us. Broken, deluded, sinful us. It's miraculous, marvelous, gracious that God chooses us. And God's choice asks a challenging question. That word with points to a powerful presence, not mere adjacent location. Jesus is not just around the apostles. He is with them. Jesus is not just taking a closer walk. He is with them, one of them, part of them, in solidarity with them. It wasn't the first time Jesus showed them what solidarity looks like, either. Jesus was in solidarity with the Samaritan woman at the well. There was racial discord between Jews and Samaritans, a long history of division and violence, yet Jesus sat and listened to her, offering her living water. Jesus was in solidarity with the bleeding woman who dared navigate a crowd, that could at any moment turn into a mob at her presence because her illness deemed her unclean. She dared to wade through the crowd just to touch his cloak. Jesus calls her daughter, claims her as family, and commends her faith. Jesus was in solidarity with a Syrophoenician woman, another woman of a different race, who taught Jesus that his ministry went beyond one nation, people, or race. Jesus was in solidarity with the poor when he turned over the tables of the money changers in the temple, whose systemic operation was a barrier to the poor meeting their holy obligations in the temple. Just as Jesus was in solidarity with the scorned outcasts, the lost, forgotten, the downtrodden oppressed, when he castigated the powers that be for their hypocrisy and called the rulers and leaders to repentance, so too Jesus is with the apostles 
on the mountain. Thus comes the challenging question of that word with. Are we with those that Jesus was with and is with now? Are we in solidarity with the poor, the oppressed, the marginalized, and the victimized? Will we live out the expectations of Psalm 72 to defend the needy, rescue the poor, and stop the oppressor? Will we humble ourselves enough to listen deeply to the experiences of communities of color and be led by them toward reconciliation? Will we be with those that Jesus is with? Now, y'all, I am not perfect. For every time I have succeeded in being with the people Jesus is with, many, many more times I have failed. The Episcopal Church is not perfect either. Its history of siding with the powerful instead of the powerless is long and sinful. It is our history, but it is not who we have to become. Just because I have failed in the past, just because we have failed in the past, just because the Episcopal Church has failed in the past does not mean that we stop trying. Jesus is with us in our failures as well. When we fall, Jesus calls us to stand back up. When we fail, Jesus calls us to keep trying. When we sin, Jesus calls us to repent. Today is Trinity Sunday. The doctrine of the Trinity is a doctrine of solidarity. God the speaker is with God the word and God the breath. God is not an object that can be known through examination. God is a relationship and can only be known in relationship. Throughout Scripture, God chooses to be with those society wants to dominate. Yes, Jesus is with us all, and Jesus seeks the lost sheep instead of the 99. The Spirit falls on those the empire views as a threat. The church as the body of Christ is a relational body. We choose to be with each other. The question remains, will we choose to be with those that Jesus chooses?